Way died um, in 98. And if you actually read the paper, it's relatively simple in its uh, explanation. He certainly didn't come up with the whole protocol. He just had this idea of cryptocurrency being a safe way to transact anonymously and uh, frictionlessly. The beauty of Bitcoin versus other proposals is to complete decentralization. Other proposals have been hybrid decentralized. So if you look at uh, some of the earlier cryptocurrency attempts, there was a root server, some central authority that had some uh, say in the actual network. Um, to call it a currency, you must be able to do currency-like things with it. If it you know, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, probably is. Same with Bitcoins, if you can buy things with them, if you can sell things for them, if you can swap them out for other currencies, that in and of itself is a currency. Not truly anonymous, it's as anonymous as you let it be, but for our simplistic understanding, we can call it anonymous. If I send you 50 Bitcoins, no one's got it now. Um, and the most important thing that it brought to the table is allows two complete or more completely untrusted parties to transfer value in some mechanism. In the timeshare example that you gave, uh, I would have to assume that you're going to fulfill on your time obligation or have to trust you. There's that mechanism uh, in place that we all agree to the system. With Bitcoin, I don't know you, you don't know me, we can transfer value. So if you think about eBay, you're, you're buying someone something, you're buying something from someone that you've never seen, who is maybe hundreds or thousands of miles away from you. You don't know whether you're going to get that item in the mail or if you're going to lose your money because, you know, it could be a scammer who's just trying to make a buck by posting fake items on eBay. But the reason it works is because there's feedback, right? Because you can see what the other person has sold and because you put trust in the system system of eBay, right? They they monitor their net their website. They monitor transactions, right? So if you report that you you've lost your money, right? They will refund your money and they'll take the loss themselves. But with the Bitcoin network, if you buy something from someone online, you've got to create that trusted connection yourself, right? There's no intermediary between you and the other person that will make sure that they remain honest. It's just completely a mutual and independent uh, relation between you and the person you're transacting with. So that's a, uh, a pretty new concept um, because it takes the centralization of uh, monetary transactions and uh, trades um, that, that exist with um, websites like eBay or Amazon and, and throws it out the window. Um, so to create a trusted connection between you and another person um, who you might be transacting with online, you need to have some way of knowing that they are trustworthy. And they let's hold up, let's hold up, on the let's hold up on the technical aspects for now because I'm going to get okay. into economics. So let me okay. just run through well, this. Um, uh, the big picture is Bitcoin allows you to transact with people in a complete vacuum. So um, you know, you no know, inter intermediaries like uh, websites that like trade are are uh, channels, right, through which you can trade currency with other people. So um, you know, uh, All right, let me just, that's, a, let me that's just, one thing to keep in mind as you're thinking about. All right, so let's talk about where Bitcoin actually came from. It was uh, at first nothing more than brain fart, like all great ideas. Um, Satoshi Nakamoto is the creator of Bitcoin. We don't know who he is. He may be an organization. He may be a she. He may be. I'm pretty sure he's an alien, but that's my own personal opinion. Or he's Neo, either way. Um, there's the earliest mention back in 2007 of a cryptocurrency a project. Wouldn't it be cool if? So if you scour the forums, if you scour the mailing lists, there's this guy talking about this really, really innovative concept. People are challenging him all over the place. They're like, this won't work. That won't work. But because he is from another planet, he's all solved his problems on his home planet, and he's brought the solutions down to Earth for us. He uh, releases the software January 3rd, 2009, along with the paper explaining how this whole thing works. And that is when Bitcoins got started. Why not another cryptocurrency? There's thousands of attempts, everyone's got great ideas. Um, first, there's fixed supply. There's this whole concept of 
there will never be more than 21 million bitcoins. There's very few other commodities that have that property. Gold is conceivably the best analog we have to that. It's not fixed, but it's decreasing in its availability as we mine more. Um, for all effective purposes, we can call it impossible to counterfeit bitcoins. You could, but it's not worth it. Uh, I can give you at least one penny. That's it in dollars. If I have other currency, I can give you whatever the denomination is. With Bitcoin, I can divide out to eight decimal places, which is infinitesimally small. So if one Bitcoin ever becomes worth $50 million, we can still transact with the Bitcoin protocol, no problem whatsoever. The, the greatest part about this is it's not money we're talking about. It's a protocol like email or BitTorrent or FTP. These are underlying protocols that have to deal with um, just how things are done. And the Bitcoin concept is money turned into a protocol, which I think is pretty clever. And most importantly, it's gained traction. So what I want to go over now is how that traction happened and what actually got gained. 2009, the beginning. So the Genesis block is brought online. So we'll talk about blocks, we can have a discussion after, but uh, the first block is brought online back then. Uh, but Satoshi is sitting there playing with his own software, sending back and forth. The first transaction to go outside of Bitcoins was uh, about a week later uh, to some person, Hal Finney. And about seven months after that, some website just arbitrarily decided to put a stick in the ground and give Bitcoins a value. A obscenely low value of 1,300 Bitcoins to $1. So if you had gotten in on that point, you would have been well off by now. 2009 is... It's kind of like a big bang when there was a huge amount of chaos right at the beginning. And then things start to cool off a little bit. So we're... we're at the point where things are starting to cool off just a little bit, but it's still pretty hot out there, and nobody really, really knows what's going on. So but some people have some ideas. 2010's went got interesting a little bit. In February, the first exchange was set up so that we can sit there and trade bitcoins for dollars, however frequently we wanted. Now a true marketplace is born. Um, that is the transactional aspect. Now the actual commerce aspect. In May, some forum user. Laszlo, or Laz, yeah, Laszlo, uh, bought pizza. He put out a request, I want two pizzas, delivered to my house, and I'm gonna pay 10,000 Bitcoins. It's arbitrary, no one knows what 10,000 Bitcoins were worth, but you figure two pizzas were roughly about $40. Probably pretty expensive pizza, and these are the actual pizzas. So, so if you do the math on that, $1 is 250 Bitcoins. Down from the original peg, it's gained value six times in the course of a year, right? It's so if, if this guy had decided not to get pizzas and instead held on to his 10,000 bitcoins, he would be sitting on about $100,000 worth of bitcoins at the moment, which he could trade off market. Unfortunately, he decided it would be a great idea to buy pizzas with it. Well, I mean, that argument goes about any end. I was going to He's probably, exactly. probably kicking himself a little bit, you know, for that, you know, for that idea. All right, so 2010 gets more interesting. MT Gox, which is currently the largest exchange, opened up um, in July. And the Bitcoins in a floating market were eight and a half cents. It, it started to get something resembling value at this point. Something we can actually measure, something we can quantify. In July, uh, the next day, another forum user uses GPUs to mine Bitcoins. This is interesting because Bitcoins were mined with CPUs and laptops. So the hardware capabilities were relatively limited, but fair. So this guy figures out a way to use GPUs to mine crazy, crazy amounts. He uh, single-handedly controls 25% of the network caching power. So of all the Bitcoins generated for a certain time period, he was getting a quarter of them. They were privately, no one really knows how much he made off of that, but that the, te was the technology being used to mine Bitcoin uh, is a pretty interesting subject in and of itself because when Bitcoins first started, people were using their CPUs to mine them. And the algorithms used uh, for calculating hashes and, and for, cal for calculating the hashes of blocks um, are actually very effective to calculate with GPUs, which run uh, hundreds of cores in some cases and can run in massively parallel, which CPUs are not very good at. So that was, that was a pretty big leap in terms